Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the combination reactions practical. Now here's the equipment that you need for this practical. It's a very very simple experiment to set up. You need a boiling tube where your reaction is going to happen. You need a measuring cylinder to measure some liquid levels at the end of the practical. You need a ice cream tub that's about half full of water. You need a clamp stand with a boss and a clamp. You need a texter, some steel wool, a ball of steel wool that's about the same diameter as your boiling tube and some paper towel. Now what we're going to get to happen in this practical is a combination reaction that is involving iron in the steel wool and oxygen in the air around it. Now the reaction is going to happen inside this boiling tube. Okay. And what we're going to do first is we're going to wet this iron wool because that's the, the presence of water is going to help it react with oxygen faster and we're going to shove it to the bottom of our boiling tube. Okay, So I've got a wet bit of iron wool in the bottom of my boiling tube. Now what I want to do is I want to seal this tube so that only the oxygen in the tube can react with the iron. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to submerge the mouth of the tube in this water. But I've also got to mark the level of the water inside the tube. And this is much easier to do if the level of the water inside the tube is a bit higher than the level of the water in the tub. So before I clamp my tube, I'm just going to let a little bit of water into it. You can maybe see there what I've done. Maybe see the level of, oops, just fallen out of there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water back in there. Don't need much water in my tube. I just need enough so that when I raise the tube, remembering to keep the mouth of the tube submerged, when I raise the tube, the level of the water inside the tube is a bit higher than this liquid level. What that's going to enable me to do now is I'm going to be able to just dry the side of the tube because it's much easier to mark then. So I'm going to take this texture and I'm just going to mark the level of the water inside the tube like so. Now this is a slow reaction, this combination reaction. So we're going to leave it for two or three days now. And it would be best if you actually set up where you're going to want to leave it. Because obviously you don't want to have to carry this whole apparatus around now because it's got water slash sloshing around in it. So when you're setting this up, try and do it where you're going to leave it. So at the side of the room. Now, when we come back after two or three days, hopefully the combination reaction will have happened. And part of the oxygen or part of the air inside this tube will have been used up because the iron would have combined with the oxygen in the tube. We're going to try and find out how much oxygen is in the air in that tube. The way we're going to do that is we're going to mark the level of the water again because by now the water will have risen up inside the tube. Now I'm going to have two markings on my tube. okay? And the way I'm going to find out how much air has been used up and how much air was there to begin with is by using this measuring cylinder. Okay, So now we're going to take a spatula or something like that and we're just going to remove whatever iron wool is left in this tube. So we're just going to pull the iron wool out of our tube now. Okay, So now that I've removed the iron wool from my tube, I've got a tube with two markings on it and what I'm going to use now is water to find out how much air was in the tube when the reaction was just about to start and when the reaction had finished. Okay, So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to fill the water up to one of the lines, it doesn't really matter which, I'm going to go for the lower line here. Okay, And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour that water into my measuring cylinder because by doing that I'm finding out what volume of air was in the tube at the end of the experiment. I'm going to empty that measuring cylinder out. I'm going to fill up my tube again, but this time to the other mark. Remember, it doesn't matter what order you do these in. Just I started with the lower mark, so I'm doing the higher mark now. And this is going to tell me how much air there was in the tube at the start of the experiment. So again, I'm going to pour that water into my measuring cylinder. I'm going to read off the measuring cylinder what volume of air was there in the tube at the start of the experiment. And I will now know what volume of air there was at the start, how much that volume has changed by. 
So I'll know how much air there was in there, how much oxygen got used up, and I can fill these values in on my table. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. Make sure you write a clear method before you start, and if you've got any questions at all, then make sure you ask your teacher while you're doing that.